to do a movie trailer voice. Well, there are different things. And when I'm speaking now, obviously I'm also doing kind of the voice, but I'm also kind of not doing the voice. So the first thing is tip number one. You actually need to train your voice. I mean, it sounds pretty primitive and it also is, but it's like, I mean, you can say that a certain amount of course is fixed. This is due to genetics and also due to you being male or female or something in between. But the thing is, how thick the vocal cords are. The vocal cords are basically two things that are vibrating in your throat. And whenever things vibrate, the thicker they are, the deeper they vibrate. It's not that, that they vibrate on a deeper level, but they vibrate in a lower frequency. This means there are less vibrations per unit of time. This means you have a deeper voice. So this is number one, train your voice. Obviously, this works short term. So short term or momentarily train. How to short term or momentarily train your voice. Easy. Like this. You just need to speak a lot. And if you speak a lot, I mean, obviously there's, there's a range, just like a muscle. I mean, if you overwork out a muscle, your muscles tend to get sore. And it's the same with the voice. You probably experienced this and then your voice just sounds like nothing anymore because you cannot speak anymore. It's like working out a muscle too much and then you cannot walk anymore because it just hurts so much. But before this, there is obviously the ideal point of training, but when it comes to just like with training a muscle, if you train a muscle and it actually gets pumped, there is much more blood in the muscle itself. And since the vocal cords are also muscles, the thing is, if you speak a lot just before something, actually the blood flow increases, therefore, um, the vocal cords already are thicker. This means they vibrate in a deeper frequency. This is a very nice hack, I guess. This is basically how to short circuit the whole long-term training thing. Here is how to do it. Either you speak for two hours straight, you also can speak very loudly, but when it comes to speaking very loudly, the problem is that you don't want to get into shouting because that's something different. Shouting, it's basically, I don't know how it works when it comes to the vocal cords, but well, you don't want to do it. What you can do, I mean, what also shouting does, it, it just kind of simulates having spoken a lot up to the point where you also could get like hoarse. But the thing is, what you can do very quick is just to shout into your armpit, for example. I mean, obviously not in public, but the thing is, if you want to get your voice trained, very easily this works. So this is working out your voice. Obviously, when it comes to long-term training, the more you speak in general, the better you will tend to get. Not only in terms of training your actual anatomics, but when it also comes to just the habit of speaking. Obviously, for example, myself, if I speak a lot of English, I tend to get better at speaking English. And it's the same with just explaining things. It's the same with other things as well. But obviously we are focusing on the sound itself, like more on the physical part, not on the mental part, not on the psychological part of habits and stuff like this. Obviously most people, when they, whenever they speak, they speak in a certain habit. They have a certain habit of speaking. And most people just would have a much higher or much broader vocal range they could actually speak with. For example, me, myself again, I tend to, when I, I speak in different dialects in German and whenever I speak like a certain amount of time I tend my voice tends to get more hoarse also tends to get a lot more deeper but the thing is um, there are just different sounds and also if you know different languages you just speak differently for example I could switch to an Italian accent speaking English and it would sound totally different but the thing is it's just different vocals, not, not really vocals, because vocal is something different. But there are different things our languages are made out of. And these things are spoken in a certain way. And if you speak in a certain way, from coming from a native language, then you actually use the same vocal things, the vocal building blocks, and just try to speak different languages with them. But this obviously doesn't really work. And therefore, the character also is kind of implied in the language which also works with British English, because I'm now doing a British accent and I'm trying to sound very smart and blah, 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 blah. You, it's, it's just a certain type of character you also play. So here's the next step. 
getting all of this together, this character and this language thing and this building block thing. Try to not connect yourself to the language you speak too much. I mean, just accept, accept that there are different roles. And whenever you do an Italian guy, then you have the, the role of an Italian guy. And whenever you record something, then obviously you don't want to, you don't want to just waste other people's time by, by just speaking about random things you would maybe speak about if you spoke to a friend. So therefore, it's also just a role I play. A ro the role of me speaking maybe a little bit more clear than usual and also explaining things and maybe exaggerating things because, well, it's the internet. But now, this is tip number two. So tip number one was to train your voice. Tip number two is to actually accept that there are different roles. And this tip number two helped me very, very much. So when I was a child, I was like, oh, this dude sounds like this. And I just could also try to sound like this. It's the same when it comes to singing. If you want to sound like Ed Sheeran, try to sing like Ed Sheeran. It doesn't mean that for all of your future you will be stuck in Ed Sheeran. I mean, it kind of is, because the more you train it, the more you get into it. And the more it is the thing you do when you sing. But imitations have a really big role. And this also helped me. For example, whenever I did a British accent, I didn't think of me speaking the British accent with my coming from my German and me as a German guy. But what helped me is that I just spoke like a British dude would speak. And therefore, I also speak in a different tone, a different tonality. And yeah, well, I, I wanted to do like different things right now, but different imitations for you to sh actually show you that you can switch in between all of these very easily. But if I don't train them before, they sound pretty crappy. I already did the Italian guy. I did like Barack Obama in the past, but I cannot right now. I'm also doing the British guy right now because I don't know, but there is something about being British on the internet uh, when it comes to being smart on the internet and talking about smart things or kind of smart things that it's like, it's not like, yeah, <laughs> this is from America. Um, I could also do Russia, for example, and then you do it. This will also sound very crappy, I guess. So now. Tip number one, train your voice. Tip number two, accept that there are roles and these are just roles you play. And if you play the role of the movie trailer guy, then obviously that's not you. That's not how you would speak to your mom or to your girlfriend or to your friend you haven't seen like in 10 years. Because for these people, you play a different role. For these people, you play the role of the son or the friend or the friend you haven't seen in 10 years or the boyfriend. Therefore, you also have different things that are connected to all of this. So when it comes to doing the movie trailer voice, just accept that it's a completely exaggerated thing. But we accept it whenever we see a trailer. Obviously, there are not trailers really made with these kind of voices anymore, but we all know this kind of voice and therefore it's all engraved in our heads because in the 90s and the 80s everybody did these trailers. So when it comes to the movie trailer voice or when it comes to doing an impression, just accept that these are roles you play, that they have a certain purpose and you don't have to do this all the time. It's not that like, oh yeah, I do a Harry Potter impression and I have to do a Harry Potter impression for the rest of my life. But it's just this one thing you do for this very specific occasion. It's the same like dressing up in Carnival. I mean, obviously, if you dress like Johnny Depp, then it would make sense to also maybe act a little bit drunk if you dress up like, um, what's the name of the character of Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean? Hmm, Captain Jack? Jack, Jack Sparrow. It's Jack Sparrow. So obviously things are connected to other things. And just like the movie trailer guy. Well, this is it. So these were already two very important tips. Train your voice. Accept that there are roles and you just play roles. And the third one. What is the third one? Uh, I mean, obviously there have to be three things. It's not that I said three things in the beginning, but the title of this video probably will be how to do the movie trailer voice. But now, when it comes to actual the actual physics, the actual anatomy, let's discuss this in the third point. The first, I mean, the third first point we made was actually to see the things we already have and to just build on them by training them. The second thing was a psychological switch, kind of. It also helped me with learning languages. I mean, I only know German and English, which is not a lot. I know a little bit of Spanish, but 
but not that much, not that I could ever speak Spanish. So basically, I just accepted these things. Not that I am limited to only two languages, but I kind of accepted that whenever I do certain things with my voice, that it's not really me. And also if I'm recording myself, obviously this is not how I would speak to anyone, apart from to a camera. I mean, obviously this is very much also in line with kind of what I would speak to and also the content is really in line because that's stuff I think about. And therefore, if it's stuff I, I think about, I mean, obviously there is like, if this is a very big chunk of things, then obviously the things I now talk about are also part of the big chunk of things I think about. Therefore, it's also part of you, but it's not like all of you. And it's not like, yeah, but it's not you. And so this is, again, the second part. Let's actually discuss the third and final thought. Or part. Obviously, I mean, if you are male, you just have thicker cords, or if you tend to go into the male spectrum, which obviously there are also things genetically and also just speaking genetically in between. But the more you have, the more testosterone you have in your blood, and well, the thicker you want, you work with cords are not you want, not cords. And if you tend to go into the female spectrum, then you then. Obviously, your voice is just a lot higher. Why? Because the ranges for the genders are just different. Therefore, if male, if female, if something in between, then you just have a certain range. Or you are more likely to have a certain range or fall within a certain range. This now means that obviously you can improve and you can also broaden your range. I mean, not really broadening your range, but just trying out where your range actually is, because most people probably don't use, only lose, use like a very small percentage of their actual spectrum. For example, I could also talk in falsetto like this all the time, but obviously, if I speak like this, dumb, um, well, a lot more people will listen to me. So now, um, what is the thing I could say as a final thought? I mean, obviously, we discussed like how thick your work chords need to be. Uh, yeah, well, um, actually, one of the biggest hacks, I mean, this is just about techniques, I guess, the third point. About techniques and anatomics and genetics. So, genetics are the one part, how thick your vocal cords are. Then there is obviously the way you speak. It's kind of a manner of speaking, but it's also falling into the number two, the psychological part. But, well, there is something else. There are just techniques you actually can train. I mean, this is not about training your voice. I mean, it's also about training your voice, but that's the third point. What is it? It's a way of speaking. And it's just a way of speaking many people do. And many people that are, for example, on the radio or do voices like this or also try to speak to a broad audience. The thing is, we kind of, as humans, psychologically are kind of wired. I mean, this is very simplified and obviously you kind of also whenever you simplify things too much, obviously they also could be wrong because the more you simplify things, the more they are likely to be, not, to be wrong because things are, just aren't that easy all the time. Not all the time, but actually none of the time things are easy, almost, I guess. Now, it's a way of speaking. It's a technique and I will now present it to you. It's called straw base. What is straw base? It's this sound. Uh, 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 uh. And the more you do it, the more you find of you have to find a certain spot in your throat. And if you find a certain spot, then you just hit it. And I just now try to find a certain spot because whenever I try to find it, I don't really find it until well, I find it. Uh, 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 uh. So obviously, you can do this inhaling or exhaling because speaking is just exhaling air and also letting whenever things vibrate. The thing is, sound is just vibrations, or sound are vibrations, depending on how it grammatically is correct, which I don't know. So now, sound is just vibration. Therefore, you have these two vocal cords, and if air flows through the vocal cords, because the air already vibrates, kind of, they also vibrate. So this is kind of very easily, but if air now flows through the vocal cords, either in this direction or the other direction, then obviously they also vibrate. This is how speaking on a very simple level works. Also, I mean, you're using your whole mouth and also face and also body in order to amp up the sound. So this is already something completely else because basically 
you have different ways of speaking. You can speak like more with your chest or more with your belly. But this is just uh, something else, I guess. It's not what I want to discuss right now. So now, obviously, by the way, I also don't use a mic in this video because I don't have a mic right now because mine is broken. Therefore, you also can hear my natural voice like more like you would if you recorded yourself. Therefore, it's, I guess, maybe more helpful because otherwise my voice would sound like much more, not artificial, but much more professional, I guess. And much better also. Because the better you record your voice, this is also just another entire part. For example, if you speak here and you record it like here, or you record it like here, or you record it like 10 meters away, obviously there's a difference in sound because the level, the level to noise ratio is just much higher. This means whenever you speak, there are a lot of noises all around you. You usually don't hear them because the brain is pretty nice or pretty smart in figuring out what these noises are. And basically, the brain basically has an active noise cancellation already built in. But if you record yourself, then obviously all these cameras don't are as good in cancelling out all these noises as the brain is. Therefore, you just hear a lot more noise, which is the reason if you record now the voice or something else much more closer to the actual source, then the actual signal to noise ratio is better. So now, better in terms of having something bigger in the in the thing in the top of the I don't know what it is called. Now. The one thing is called the denumerator, but the other thing, I don't know which one is which right now. So now, but I present to you this kind of straw base already. And let's just now try to find a straw base again. Uh, obviously, it looks completely like what I. What is this dude doing? But now, the thing is, you can actually combine this voice. And this is now not me speaking as much in a British accent, but much more in the way I usually speak. But, but now, let's do the British accent again. The thing is now, if you combine these two things, like the normal speaking voice, and actually the straw base, then you get something that overlaps. So, for example, I could just speak I, I could just speak and now I do also the sound like uh, and now I try to combine them and now I could also try to speak obviously this is now exaggerated and very slowly and also I'm doing it kind of very crappily so let's try to do it again now I'm obviously uh, I am obviously using the sound I mean this is kind of how also, guys in movies talk very deeply, because the thing is, I think what is happening is that the straw base is basically a lower vibration, therefore it's a, not a lower vibration, but it vibrates at a, in a lower frequency, therefore if you now combine these two, like your normal voice, and also the straw base, what happens is that these two get kind of mixed up, and then we kind of think that it's deeper, that the actual content is deeper, even though it isn't because there's just this overlapping noise, which is the straw base. And that's how you do a movie voice in three steps and also in 18 minutes.